Whether you're a seasoned veteran who has experienced the story of this game hundreds of times, or a new player who has yet to explore all the wonders of Sinnoh, it is hard to deny that Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl can be quite an easy adventure to beat. There are some roadblocks here and there, but Pokemon is designed to be playable by children after all. What if I told you that you can ramp up the game's difficulty in a way that even experienced players will struggle to reach the credit scene? There is no need for cheats, hacks or additional software. The magic I'm talking about all happens in your head. And the key to it is called Nuzlocke. Now let's get started. A Nuzlocke is a challenge where you play any Pokemon game with a set of self-imposed rules to increase the difficulty. The beauty of this challenge is that it forces you into often unexplored and unexpected territories. This can include everything from playing with a Pokemon you have never seen before or figuring out solutions to situations that would not occur in a regular playthrough. A Nuzlocke is usually won by beating the champion of a game. In the case of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, that would be Cynthia. If you're interested and want to do a Nuzlocke on your own, here's how it's done. Keep in mind that all of the following rules are simply suggestions, and you can add and remove as many as you'd like. It is your challenge after all. There are only two rules that are pretty much standard to any Nuzlocke. The first and defining rule for the challenge is that any Pokemon that faints is considered to be dead and cannot be revived or reused in battles. Most players will put their dead Pokemon into a dedicated box, or boxes if you're anything like me. Others will release them for good as they are only sitting around anyway. The second rule is as important, but can also be modified depending on which kind of Nuzlocke you are doing. You are only allowed to catch the first wild Pokemon encounter in each unique route or area. You can check if you entered a new route by looking for pop-ups on the screen that will tell you its name. Make sure to keep track of them, as it can get very hard to remember previous or far-stretching areas such as Route 207 in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, especially in longer runs. If you accidentally run or take out a Pokemon, you lost your shot on this route and have to move on without catching any additional Pokemon. Double battles work a little bit different here, as you can choose which Pokemon you can catch. That is, if your partner doesn't decide to kill them both before you even get the chance to throw a single ball. Static Encounters are the exception to this rule as you are always allowed to catch them. A Static Encounter is predetermined and you will always get the same Pokemon out of it. In most games, you can see the Pokemon in the overworld and will trigger the fight by interacting with it. Like Snorlax in Red and Blue, or the Box Legendary in almost every game. As already mentioned earlier, this rule can be modified. If you are doing a Grass-type only Nuzlocke, you probably want to change it to only being able to catch the first Grass-type encounter in each area instead. There are some rules that are not defining for a Nuzlocke, but are quite often included as they make life a bit easier or the challenge more interesting. Most players will ignore the basic rule set as long as they have not received their first Pokeballs. This is to allow to safely catch a few team members before starting your challenge and to avoid unbalanced wild and trainer encounters in the starting areas of some games. In Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, there are two ways of getting your first Pokeballs. The main way is by letting the professor's assistant teach you how to catch wild Pokemon in Route 202, after which you will receive 20 Pokeballs. The other is by spending your well-earned pocket money in the Pokemart in Sand Gem Town. Players will also make use of the so-called Species Clause when it comes to encountering a Pokemon of the same species as an already obtained one. This makes sure to enforce variety and allow for a more versatile team and game experience. If you encounter a duplicate Pokemon, you can skip it and try again with another encounter. In this case, some players would also add a limit to repeated encounters, and if it is reached in a specific area, the next encounter cannot be skipped anymore. The Blackout and Whiteout clause specifies that if your entire party faints, you will lose the entire run. When looking up some information about Nuzlocke, I was generally surprised when I found out that this rule was not considered to be part of the basic rule set, as every Nuzlocke challenge I've seen so far made use of it. So if you're doing a first challenge and want an easier time, keep playing until all of the Pokemon are dead. The rule with the least impacting gameplay, but one that you will see around the most, is the nickname rule. A lot of Nuzlockers will force themselves to give names to caught Pokemon with a goal to create an emotional bond to their team. It is up to you whether you want to see every Pokemon as a tool towards beating the challenge, or weep in a corner for an hour after losing your beautiful cupcake to a random crit in Route 205. While the previous rules can be found pretty consistently in all kinds of Nuzlocke challenges, players can come up with their own twists to make things more interesting or adjust the difficulty to their own skill level. There is a lot of them, and since you are most likely watching this video to figure out what a Nuzlocke is, I picked out some that I think would make most sense to add to your first Nuzlocke attempts. Keep in mind that as long as the first two rules are there, the challenge is still considered to be a Nuzlocke, no matter how many other rules you add or remove. In order to make the game harder, you could for example decide to not use any potions or status healing items in battle, only use healing items found in the ground, so no Pokemon centers, or use no healing at all. More experienced players will also set the in-game battle type option to set, not allowing them to switch Pokemon after taking out an opposing Pokemon in battle. And if you feel like your run is getting too hard to beat, and you still want to have a challenge, you can use completed gyms as a checkpoint, 
through set back two should you ever lose your Nuzlocke. Another way to bump up the difficulty is to not flee from wild battles, randomize your starter or even release it after getting the first encounter, or introduce a level cap equal to the highest level Pokemon of the next gym leader or champion. The odds to find a shiny Pokemon are pretty low, but in case that happens to you, it is pretty common to catch it regardless and if it faints to not release it, so you can later send it to another cartridge or upload it to the Pokemon bank. This is called the shiny clause. Players using emulators are more likely to skip this rule as the shiny cannot be transferred into any official Pokemon game. The final rule is more an exception, but if it applies to you, feel free to use it. Some players will be using hacks or cheats to add leveling items to their game. This can fairly often be seen paired with the level cap rule during live streams or longer challenges, in order to avoid countless hours of grinding. Adding items to your game to level up your team faster does not necessarily make the challenge easier, because winning most Nuzlocke depends on careful planning and good execution in fights anyway. With the rules established, you're almost ready to jump into your first Nuzlocke. There are, however, some things to look out for to make sure that your run goes smoothly and doesn't end to an unexpected surprise. The first and most important advice I can give you is to never underestimate your opponent. Playing through the story of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl might seem like an easy thing to do in a normal mode, but adding Nuzlocke rules can turn an easy gym battle into a run-ending disaster. Always make sure that your team is fully ready for a fight. I'm not talking about Gym Leaders, Elite Four or Team Galactic. You should always be prepared for those as you know exactly when they are going to happen. No, the battles I'm talking about are the random encounters throughout the world. After every battle, you should try to heal heavily wounded Pokemon and cure status effects to make sure a random encounter cannot end your run right there. The previous mentioned key battles, like the ones against Gym Leaders, are still the ones you should prepare for the most. Type matchups can be confusing when starting out, but there's lots of tools such as this matrix to help you out. Having a well-rounded team can save in a lot of unexpected situations if you decide to play the game blindly. Fire, Water, Grass or Steel Fairy Dragon team course are a pretty good guideline to follow to make sure you resist a lot of attacks and can dish out strong hits as well. In most Pokemon games, you will have to face the Elite Four at the end of the game. Fighting them will require you to win four battles against highly skilled trainers with fully equipped teams as well as to beat our beloved champion in one go. No reviving, no Pokemon Center. It all happens right there, and most unprepared players will not make it through half of it. Since it is the final part of the challenge, don't be shy on wasting your resources to equip your team, and fill your backup with healing items to secure your victory. There are some other things to think about during the run to make your life a little bit easier. Make sure to collect all the free goodies you can. Some of the best battle items in the game can be found just lying around in the grass patches, so make sure to check every corner if you're not familiar with their positions yet. Some NPCs in the game will also be giving you free items and Pokemon. These gifted Pokemon can come in very handy when trying to build a well-rounded team, since they're basically for free and do not count towards the encounters you can have in an area. What a lot of players forget when it comes to catching only one Pokemon per route is that each city also counts as one unique area. So if you happen to have a fishing rod with you and you see a patch of water nearby, feel free to yoink yourself a new team member for free. In the case of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, you can get your first fishing rod by talking to an NPC to the left of Jubilee City. One last thing to look out for, if you decide to release any Pokemon, make sure to remove any key items they might carry, as they will vanish with them. This concludes everything you need to know to start your first Nuzlocke challenge. I hope I could show some of you a new way to experience and enjoy Pokemon games. If you're still not sure where to start, I will link some useful guides in the description down below. Here are some other fun challenges to try out yourself. Thanks for watching.